Hello, I'm gonna go over the solution of the employee scheduling problem that some of you didn't have time to see today in class. The story behind this problem is the following. There's a new restaurant that's being opened and we're thinking about how to staff it. So the data that we have is this. Based on our experience and based on how much demand we expect to get each day of the week, we estimated how many servers we would need to have there working that particular day to have to be able to provide good service. So for example, here in column J, it says that uh, given how many people I expect to come to my restaurant on a Monday, I think I need 17 servers there on duty that day. For Tuesday, I think I need 13 servers and so on. Um, you can think that I already added extra people to these numbers just in case somebody falls sick so that's been taken into account and then the idea is how do I um, hire people for my restaurant so that overall I have hired the least possible number of people there's one detail that we also have to take into account which is this workers at this restaurant they work the following way five consecutive days on duty followed by two days off duty this means that there are potentially seven different types of work week that I tried to depict here in this area in rows 8 through 14. So wherever you see green, it represents that the person will be working during those days and the white represents days when they're off. So for example, uh, there could be some people whose work week goes like this, I work Monday through Friday and then I am off Saturday, Sunday. For some people their work week could be I work Tuesday through Saturday and I am off Monday and Sunday and so on and so forth. Okay. The last type of work week would be I work Sunday through Thursday and I am off Friday and Saturday. So considering that these are the seven possible types of work week again the question is uh, how many people should I hire to staff my place um, let's say we're assuming all of them get paid the same amount per week so minimizing number of workers is equivalent to minimizing uh, the expenses with the wages now for the variables we end up having to have one variable for each type of work week because essentially what I want to find out is how many people should I hire to work this way? How many people should I hire to work this way? And so on. And these variables are here represented by the x1 through x7. Now, if you want to write this mathematically, you can think about it the following way. If I am looking at the Monday, so if I show up at the restaurant on a Monday and open the door and look inside to see who is going to be there, well, the people who, whose work week is the one Monday through Friday definitely will be there. So if I have X one of those people, I will count them in. The people named X2, those whose work week begins on Tuesday, they will not be there. So they're not going to be counted into this expression and neither will be the people whose work week begins on Wednesday. But everybody else will because as you can see here, there's a green box for them. So the people whose work week is the first and the fourth and the fifth and the sixth and the seventh, all of these will be present. And I would like this total number of people to be at least 17 okay so this is what the Monday constraint would look like in terms of the math all right now what I want is to take this formula here and represent it as an Excel formula well to do that, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to say to indicate when people are on duty or off duty, I'm going to go in this uh, area for rows 8 through 14 and place the number 1 whenever someone is working and leave it empty whenever they are not working. And if I do that, you'll see that I can actually write a formula that takes my variables 
and multiplies them with these zeros and ones to obtain exactly this expression that I wrote down here. So for example, consider the Monday constraint again. If I create a sum product between my seven variables and this first row here of zeros and ones, and let me change the alignment here to show you this better. Look at what this is going to do. One times x1, right? First times first plus second times second, etc. So one x1 plus zero x2, zero x3. So x2 and x3 disappear. One x4, one x5, one x6, one x7. And that's exactly what we wrote down here, right? These are the people who will be present Monday. And I want them to add up to at least 17. So this formula will work, the sum product, for every day of the week. The only thing I need to do before I can copy it down is to just make sure that I anchor the blue part where the variables are because that one should be constant for every day of the week. What's going to change from day to day is the collection of zeros and ones, meaning who is it that is present that day at work and who is it that is off duty that day. So if I go in here and I select this blue cart and place the dollars in it and hit enter, then now I can take these and copy. And this will give me the sum product between, again, the row of variables, number row five, and uh, whatever row of, of zeros and ones I'm looking at for the particular day of the week. All right. Um, if you look at the posted sheets, the completed sheets for lecture two, you'll see I am going to need seven formulas of this type and all seven of them will be typed in there and they will correspond in Excel terms to the seven sum products that we have here. The final thing we need for this to, to work is to calculate our objective function, but because these are seven, in, seven independent types of work week, the total number of people I hire is simply going to be the sum of the people that I hire to work according to work week type one, plus the number of people I hire to work this way, plus the number of people I hire to work this way, and so forth. So that is simply the sum of all the variables. Okay. And this will tell me how many people are there at my restaurant. Good. So let's do the solver piece now. If we go here to data solver. The objective cell will be total number of workers, so age 16, and I would like that to be as small as possible. We're assuming here that all of these workers get paid the same amount per week, so minimizing the number of workers is equivalent to minimizing the expenses that I have with their salaries. If they were paid different amounts, it, we could change this sum formula here to a sum product that would multiply these variables in row five with perhaps another row that I would type in here that would have the salary depending on the type of work week they're working. But for now, let's just say we minimize the number of workers. The variables are the ones in row five. So I select the whole range A5 through G5. And for constraints, I just have to say that I need the number of workers that are present at the restaurant each day of the week. This is in column H, H8 through H14. That should be at least the minimum number of workers that I need from J8 through J14. Then make sure we check, we check this box for non-negativity and change that to the LP solver. And we can solve this now. So 
So now your first reaction probably is what is a third of a person? Because we can see here, for example, I'm saying that I have one and a third person working the week this way. So there are a couple of interpretations for this value. You could think of that as a part-time worker, for example. So this is, in this case, it would be saying I have one person that works full-time each of those days, and I have one person that works a third of the day. Okay. And the same here, I have three and a third, two, seven and a third. I didn't have to hire anybody to work the week this in this fashion. Three and a third and five. So this 22 and a third is the bare minimum number of people you need to hire to staff this place, considering that these are the only seven possible work weeks for you. Notice, interestingly, the first five, uh, six days of the week were meeting these requirements exactly. And there is a big excess here on Sunday, which at first might look like something that is very inefficient, but in fact, it's not. There's no way to avoid this excess because there's no way to have fewer than this many people. This excess just happens as a result of the fact that these work weeks are the way they are. If these holes were perhaps somewhere else, we might be able to have a little bit less of an excess here. Uh, on Sunday, but this is what it is. Uh, the second interpretation for these fractional numbers is that you could think of them as an average because the rational operation is a operation that repeats itself every week. You're going to have to do the same thing again and again. So imagine that I have the first week of the year, I have one person working the week this way, Monday through Friday. Then the second week of the year, I also have one person working this way. And the third week of the year, I have two people working this way. Now, if I take this and repeat, and I do one person, one person, two people, and then one person, one person, two people who are working the week this way, it means that every three days, I will have had four people working the week that way. So this four over three is the one and a third. So on average, I have one and a third persons working in that fashion. And finally, if you don't like these two interpretations and you just wished you had an integer value here as, a, as the answer, we will learn later in the course that, yes, uh, we can ask the solver to do this, but first we have to learn a few more concepts. So we have to see a few more things, but we'll get there eventually and uh, in addition to solving this problem, this will open the door for us to be able to solve many other kinds of interesting problems that do require integrality in the variables. I hope uh, this explanation is helpful and then allows you to understand how to model and solve this problem. And thank you for watching.